and welcome to Expecting Women's Ministry. I am your host, Minister B.J. Franklin. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter how we feel in our bodies, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for joining me again on today. I hope you have a pad and a pen so that you can write down information that is that is valuable to you so you can write down scriptures as well so you can go back and read for yourself why don't you get on the phone go call a neighbor call a friend and let them know minister bj franklin is on and she is getting ready to minister the word of god but look i want you to join me on my phone conference every thursday evening i have a phone conference going on all you have to do is call in and mute your phone just in case you have any background noises so that we will not be a distraction to anyone because we don't want to cause anyone to miss anything just mute your phone and enjoy the word of god be sure you share that information as well with your family and friends the, the number is on the screen so be sure and join me on thursday evenings at 8 p.m for that phone conference i am talking about prayer that is my mandate from god i study prayer that's right. Prayer is important for the believer's life. Yes, it is. We must have a prayer life. We must learn how to pray. The disciples came to Jesus over in the book of Luke 11 and 1. When Jesus was praying in a certain place, this is what the word of God says. When Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased from praying, his disciple, one of them came to him and asked him, Master, teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples disciples how to pray. You go back and you read that in Luke 11 and 1 and Jesus began to teach them. That's where that our father prayer comes in. That's our model prayer. So prayer is taught. Prayer is learned. So be sure and join me. Hey, look, I have a conference coming up. Expecting Women's Conference. Yeah, this year coming. That's right. January the 7th, 2023. We're going to have an exciting women's uh, conference going on. I want you to join me. If you are a, an expecting woman of God, I expect God to do what he says. I want you to join us. The information is up on the screen. Write the information down so that you can join us. The fee is only $30. That comes with your continental breakfast and your lunch as well. And we're going to be praising and worshiping God like we're losing our mind. Yes, we are. That's right. So we can be ready for the year 2023. So please join us on that first Saturday in January. Be sure and tell your uh, family and your friends as well. We do have some group ratings. That's right. If you have a group of 10 or more, that fee will only be $25. You young women, we want you young ladies to come and join us. 16 to 20 years old, you only pay $20 is your fee because we want you there as well. So be sure that you get the word out about this conference that is coming up. We are so excited about it and we hope to see your face in the place. Be sure you take the information down so that you'll be able to share that with others as well. Let us get ready to go into our wellness because as you know, since I've started this ministry, I've always implemented wellness into this ministry. Wellness is very important for all of us. That's right. I hope you're getting out, getting your walk in. The weather here in Texas have been so nice and cool the mornings the evenings that's right so you can get out get you a good brisk walk in 30 minutes to an hour that's right you don't have to do the whole hour at one time because some of us does have challenges in our lives so if you can do 15 minutes here or 30 minutes there as long as you get a good hour walk in or if you're a challenge where you can't walk do you some sit and be fit that's right raise the pick those uh, feet up off the floor use those dumbbells those hand weights and exercise that upper body as well. There is 
is no reason for us not to be able to exercise because we can sit and be fit as well. And we need to exercise at least five days a week. Get it in. And not only that, drink that water. I cannot stress that enough for us to drink the water. It is important that we drink three to four 16 ounce bottles of water every day. Water cleanses the body. Yes, it does. Water helps the blood flow. Water helps the skin look beautiful. Water helps the brain. Water helps the liver. That's right. Water helps us, keeps us from being constipation. That's constipated as well. So be sure that you're getting that water down and be sure you eat a good green healthy diet fruits and vegetables implement that in your diet as well because that helps the digestive system as well so be sure that you're eating a good green healthy diet as well and like i always said also along with wellness you're gonna have to if you don't mind your own business mind your business that's right all this stress that we carry around on our shoulders and in our lives come from being in other folks business Leave your grown children alone. Let your grown children be grown. Let them raise those babies the way they want to raise those babies. Quit being stressed out on the job. Getting in other people's business. Getting in stuff that you can have no control of. You do not have to carry that weight. You do not have to be stressed. You do not have to be anxious about any of that stuff. Mind your own business and learn to smile more. That's right. Walk around with a smile on your face. I'm not talking about agree and just a smile on your face will make you feel better also be nice to people be kind to people see what you can do as a as a person to be nice for somebody hold the door open for somebody whatever it is but learn to do those things that will help us as well and also make sure you have a positive mindset you have the power to think about what you want to think about if you don't want to think about it don't think about it the remote control is in your hand it's just like a channel just Change the channel, whatever you want to think about, but be positive minded. Get you plenty of sleep and rest. That's right. Go to bed. Get you plenty of sleep and rest. I've told you before, I went to bed and I've slept all night long and woke up and I was tired because the mind didn't rest. Learn how to rest your mind. Don't bring all that stuff to bed with you. What happened in a run of a day between you and your spouse, between you and your boyfriend, your girlfriend, between you and your children what happened on the job, what the neighbor did, it's gone. Let it go. Don't bring all that stuff to bed with you. Relax your mind. Rest your mind so you can get yourself a good night's sleep and a good night's rest. And not only that, like I always say, have a strong prayer life. That's right. Make sure you are connected to God, that you have a life of prayer. This is the way we live, a life of prayer. We're praying and asking God for healing and we're on all this medication and all these uh, ointments that we're rubbing on ourselves. We're praying and asking God to do what he said he would do. But God is waiting on you to do what he said he would do. All we got to do is line up with the word of God. So that is our wellness on today. We're going to go ahead and get into what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about uh, you don't have to pray for your needs. Did you hear what I said? You do not have to pray for your needs. You don't have to do that. No, you don't. Philippians 4 and 19. I hope you have your Bibles as well as your pen and your pad so you can write these scriptures down and go back and read them for yourself. Philippians 4 and 19 says here, But my God shall supply all all your needs. That's right. He's going to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So you don't have to worry about uh, 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 your needs and, 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 the, and the things that you need. God is going to supply that. God is the type of God. He let it rain on the just as well as the unjust. Whether you serve him or not. He's going to supply all of your needs. That is a promise from God the Father. He's going to do that. You know, one thing about my children. 
And when my children were small, they didn't have to worry about what they was going to eat. No, they did not. They would, they might come in there and say, Mama, what we're going to eat. But they're not asking in worry. They're just asking because they want to know what's for dinner or what's for breakfast or whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? So they didn't have to worry about that. My children didn't have to wonder about what they're going to drink. My children didn't have to worry about where they're going to sleep and what, what clothes they're going to wear. If you are a child of God, you can count on that promise. He said, and he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And trust me, God is rich enough to supply all of our needs. That's, yes, he is. That's why he said all of our needs. He's just that rich. Keep in mind, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. It all belongs to him. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't even have to pray about that as children of God. And that's what God calls us. God calls us his children. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am a child of the most high God. Yes, I am. And I expect my heavenly father to do just what he said that he would do. I expect him to do that, especially when I know that I am living according to his word. You know, when my children was little and they did good in school and they were so proud of themselves and, and, and brought that picture home or brought that uh, uh, report card home or that progress report home and they knew that it was really good, they knew that they was going to get something even special special for that. You see what I'm saying? So when you line your life up with the word of God, expect God to do special things for you because why? You walk in obedience to his word. But you know what? That's why I keep stressing. You have to get into the word of God. You have to know the word of God. You don't know the promises of God if you don't read the promises of God. If you don't invest some time studying the Bible. That's right. Know what God has has for you. That's right. And you can get that as well. We have to realize that the Bible tells us man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we cannot live just by physical food. We have to be able to eat the word of God on a daily basis in order for us to grow. Some of us are not growing. That's right. Some of us are not growing as believers. We're still Christians. We're still Christian. We haven't gotten to the point where we are a, a believing Christian. There's a difference between a Christian and a believing Christian. When you're a believing Christian, you have no doubt in your mind that God is going to do it and you're going to live in a way that shows I expect. Expect God to do that. When you're a Christian, you're kind of wishy-washy. You try to figure it out yourself, and you talk to everybody else but God. But when you really a, 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 a believing Christian, you stand on the Word of God. You eat the Word of God. You study the Word of God. You meditate on the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God. Why? Because I know that's what sustains me. That's right. The Word of God is what sustains me. If you if you stop eating any length of time, guess what? You're going to soon wither down. That's right. You're going to wither down. You're going to become weak and you might even die. It's the same way with the word of God. If you don't get a good meal, nourishment in the word of God on a daily basis, I'm pretty sure you're going to wither away because the Bible says that we are to stay connected to him because he, are the, he is the vine and we are the branches. And in order for us to grow, we're going to have to stay connected to him as well. Let us, um, let us take a look over here at Acts 17 and 20. That's right. It's Acts 17 and 28 is what we're going to look at because we have to realize we have to stay connected to God in order to live. That uh, first part of uh, Acts 17 and 28 says here, for in him we live and move and have our beings. Yes, it is. For in him, that's right, in God himself, that's how we live and move and have our being. You cannot think that you do this thing on your own. You do nothing in and of yourself. I I can do nothing in and of myself. The reason why I am here, the reason why you are here, we breathe and live and move and have our very beings because of him and him alone. It is God that keeps the breath of life in us. That's right. He keeps the breath of life in us and we continue to move. So then we ought to be able to count on him. That's right. He's our father, which is in heaven. That's why I'm letting us know you do not have to 
pray for your needs. He is going to supply your needs, you know. But we first must understand the difference between a need and a want. A need is something that is necessary. A need is something that is necessary. We must have in uh, uh, we must have on a daily basis in order to live. A need is something that we must have on a daily basis, like food, water, clothing, and shelter. Those are needs. Yes, it is. He said, "I will supply all of your needs." You don't have to pray and ask God. You don't have to pray and ask God for no water. That's right. He going to give you water. You might not have you might not have a cold bottle of water, but thank God he gave you some water. You might you 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 might not be able to eat the kind of food that you want. You might be eating pork and beans out of a can and, st- and instead of a sirloin steak. Thank God you do have the pork and beans that's still supplying your needs. That's right. He said that I will supply your needs, all of them, your food, your water, your clothes, the clothes on your back. They might not be name brand. They might not even be clean. But guess what? You still have clothes on your back, and you still ought to tell God, thank you. That's right. You might not have the kind of shelter that you want to live in. But guess what? Long as you still have shelter, you might be living in a shelter. At least you still have shelter. So you should still tell God, thank you. You might be uh, 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 living under the bridge in a tent like some people. You still have shelter. God said, I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. That's right, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. You do not have to pray for your need. God is going to do that. It says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you thank God for the bottle of water that's not cold? That's right. Do you thank him for that? Do you thank God for the pork and beans coming out of the can? You see what I'm saying? Learn to have a grateful heart. Whatever, wherever you're at in life if you if, if you if you your shelter is at a shelter learn to tell God Lord I thank you for this that's right because guess what somebody is worse off than we are somewhere in this world yes they are yes they are I want you to believe that yes they are you might not have the finest of clothes that's right I remember the time when when, when I could not afford when I could not afford to go to uh, Mason's and Dillers and, and places like that I had to go to the Goodwill I had to go to the Sand Dollar but you know what I thank God for that I would go there and I would find me a uh, 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 nice things to wear put them in the cleaner I thank God for that I remember I had to go to the Garoy sale I don't have have to go to the garage sale now because I go to the garage sale because I want to, not because I have to. I had to. When you walk in the will of God and when you study the word of God, you see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 God will, God will continue to elevate you. So instead of me walking around with an attitude because I'm not able to dress like sister so-and-so on Sundays because I'm not able to dress like, 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 like whoever at work because I'm not able to go out and eat with them on the job. You see what I'm saying? Whatever state you find yourself in, there will be content. That's right. God wants us to be content. Not satisfied, but content. So I encourage us to continue to walk in the ways of God. Give thanks to God for all things. Give God give God thanks for all things. That's right. Uh, like, I, like I said before, uh, uh, we have to have a grateful uh, attitude. Have an attitude of gratefulness. That's right. Right. When you have an attitude of gratefulness instead of just a bad, nasty attitude, you know, toward people because because you're not where they're at, show God that you are grief grateful. And then you'll be happy for someone else as well as God continue to supply all of our needs. I want us to continue to, to look at that and study that. Don't you have all your needs? Or aren't all of your needs met? All of my needs have been met. All of my needs have been met. Even one time before, my needs, I, I, uh, 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 I was, I'll never forget when my baby, when my baby was about uh, two years old, two or three years old, and I didn't even have lights, but I had shelter. 
The lights was turned off. I had to run an extension cord to the neighbor's house. Yes, I did. You see what I'm saying? But God has delivered me, and I thank God because I kept a good attitude about it. You see what I'm saying? I was doing my best as, 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 as a young Christian. I'm going to tell you, I was a Christian. I was not a believing Christian. I was just a Christian. But I had to go through these things so I could see the greatness of God and all that God had for me. He, he, I, I eventually began to gain those things. As I studied the word of God, God wants to bless us. I remember the time I had shelter, but guess what? Didn't have water in the house. That's right. But you know what? I still had water, even though I had to maybe go next door and get it. I still had water. So God is a good God. He said, I'll supply all of your needs. He didn't say how it would come. He did not say how it would come, but he said that he will supply all of our needs uh, uh, as well. So as, 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 as we get ready to look even a little bit farther into this here, we're going to look at, um, I want us to go to Matthew 6 and 24. Go to Matthew 6 and 24. Don't pray for your needs. Don't do that. You don't have to do that. Don't do that. There are some things that we can live without. A lot of this stuff we have, it is not a need. There's some things that we can live without. Yes, it is. We're going to touch on this for just a minute, and then we're going to, and then, uh, 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 and then we'll come back to it on the next, on the next time on this Mac Matthew six and twenty four. It lets us know here: no one can serve two masters. No, you cannot serve two masters. It says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. Either you're going to serve God or you're not going to serve God. Whether you serve him or whether you don't serve him, guess what? He is going to supply all all of your needs. That's right. All of your needs is going to be, be met. But you cannot serve the both of them at the same time. You're going to have to serve one or the other. And then it goes on here to say uh, uh, in that next verse uh, uh, in, in, in Matthew, it goes on to say, therefore I say to you, he's talking to us. He's talking to us. Now he's talking to us, the believer. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Don't be so concerned about your life. That's right. I'm talking to the believer. If you are a believer in Christ, don't be so concerned about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or not about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Our lives is, 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 is more than that. So the Bible tells us, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. If God is your father, a father takes care of his children. A real father takes care of his children. That's right. And God is our heavenly father. And he told us, like I told you before, my children, they didn't have to worry about none of that stuff. They didn't worry about that. And that's how God fashioned us. He fashioned us as children. I don't know about you, like I said, but I am a child of God. I do not worry about my life. My life is in his hand. I don't worry about what I want to eat. I thank God that I am able to go and eat where I desire to eat, eat what I want to eat. Yes, indeed, I am by the grace of God. Why? Because I stay in the word of God. I stay in the will of God. I stay obedient to the word of God. And when you be obedient to the word of God, uh, 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 you'll be able to, God will give you the desires of your heart. So stop worrying about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Some people worried about what they're going to eat for dinner, sitting up eating lunch. Do you hear what I said? You sitting up eating lunch, thinking about dinner. Some people worrying about what they're going to drink when they when, when they get off of work. What are we going to go for drinks afterward when you're sitting there with, with a drink on your desk? You see what I'm saying? Don't worry about that. Don't even worry about your bodies, he tells us. We don't have to worry about that. He tells us we don't have to worry about things like that. As children of God, he is our father in heaven. And God will take care of us no matter what. But we have to learn to trust in him. It's not about what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's right. We walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible tells us no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. And I want to ask you a question. Do you walk upright? 
Do you walk upright? If you walk upright and you know whether you walk upright or not, you know what's going on in here. You know what you do in the nighttime. You know you know what you do when you by yourself. You got some preachers and, 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 and pastors and bishops and Sunday school teachers and praise dancers and, and people that, that are that that are uh, call themselves working in the church and they're worried about their lives. They're worried about what they're going to wear. They worry, and then not only that, they worry about what people are going to say about them. I am so past people. I don't worry about people. I don't worry about food. I don't worry about clothes. I don't even worry about my life. Because one thing I know, if I was to drop dead right now, bam, I'm right in the presence of the Lord. Because he says, absent from, to bo- from the body is to be present with the Lord. Can you say that about your life? Do you live your life in that way where you could say that? Death don't scare me. I I don't worry about that. The Bible tells us, he told us, don't you worry about all that. We don't have to worry about that. Some people are worried sick about something that haven't even happened and might not even happen. We're going to have to learn to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. And then not only that, the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord and do good. Why you trusting him, do good as well. So let me remind us again, you don't have to pray for your needs. That's right. God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord God, we come realizing that thou art God and beside thee there is no other. Lord God, we bless your holy and divine name. Oh, how we glorify you, we magnify you, we worship you, we praise you, and we adore you. Lord God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, thou art truly great, and you are greatly to be praised. Lord God, we want to thank you for your word, Lord God. Father God, help us to realize, Lord God, to cast our cares up on you because you care for us Lord God help us to realize Lord God you said I'll give you the desires of your heart Lord God Father God help us to be obedient to your word Lord God help us to meditate on your word Lord God both day and night Lord God Father God help us to share your word go out Lord God and compare men and women and boys and girls to come to Christ help help us to let them know master that there is a better way of life Lord God Lord God we bless your holy and divine name we thank you Lord God thank Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love and kindness that you have shown toward each of us. And then let us go out and tell a dying world that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen, amen, amen. We just thank God again on this evening. Be sure and mark your calendars for January the 7th, 2023. For that expecting women's conference that is coming up. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. God bless you.